That's Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three two-minute rounds in the Tough Enough Lightweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with a record of one win and three losses. Fighting out of Taurus MMA, Las Vegas, Nevada. Dane White Tyson has. His opponent stands across the cage in the red corner with a record of one win and two losses. Fighting out of School of Hard Knocks and Lucha MMA, Las Vegas, Nevada. He is Nick Perez. The referee in charge of the action inside the cage is Dr. John Quinn. Dr. John Quinn, the third man in the booth. Nick Perez versus Dane Hans. Perez wants to open up there with a kick. Oh, that has been nice take on my Perez though. Yeah, very nice. Straight to side control. We noticed there's been a lot of great starts in uh, MMA as of late. When you look at these two guys before, they were like two cage lions. They sure did. Oh, Perez. Oh, another double leg for oh, Perez. Oh, Perez better watch he's his neck. He's got Kane Geechin, though. It looks like it's pretty tight, but he's fighting out of it. He's pushing down on that on that elbow. Yeah. Dane Hans, that's the second time he's attempted it. He's out it. now. But Perez is out. So Perez has the colorful black, white, and red uh, tights. The Dane Hans on the bottom. I wonder if that's going to... Um, with uh, black and green. If Perez would be uh, tentative to take him down from now on, because both times he took him down, he got Kane Geechin. Mm -hmm. Live from the Casablanca Resort Casino Golf and Spa, gorgeous George and goes along with UFC veteran Ulysses Gomez here. And this is a fourth fight out of ten. I mean, he got caught for a second there, but Hans really hasn't really threatened very much from this position. So I think he's got to look to try and get up because he's not really doing too much here off his back. Yeah, open up that guard, maybe create a, well, he's trying a to butterfly. A, he's trying to set up a triangle from this position right here. He's trying to get by some control on the right wrist, and that uh, throws that. Looking over play. the ref, looks like he wanted some sort of a, a breakup. Now he gets up, but he eats some punches. Look at oh, Perez, he's just out. swinging away. He is hurting. He's rolling though. He, he is hurting Hans over and over there, but uh, nothing to put him out. Now Perez is threatening from the back. He, he's uh, taking for Suplex City right here. Looks like a, a oh, he got the Kimura though. Very slick stuff here. You can definitely nice. tell these guys. Have some experience over some of the earlier. He has that. Ten seconds left, though. Some of the earlier combatants. It's just not going to be enough time. Yeah, no, he's finish not on enough top, as well, though. But uh, he's safe. All right. That's the end of the first round. You know, there were some submission attempts from Hans uh -huh. that Perez was busy fighting off, but that sequence where Perez hurt Hans against the fence, I think it's on the 10-9 of my scorecard. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you get the, take, the two takedowns and the little barrage that he had up against the cage, I think is enough to solidify that round for him. Hans needs you, you to come oh. around here and, and, and figure out what he's going to do in round two because he can't have another round like that. How about you, Ulysses? No, I give it to Perez. I mean, I think he did a good job. Uh, uh, he controlled the majority of the fight in the first round. I mean, the first part of the, of the round. And uh, towards the end, even though he got kind of Kimura, he had not mounted in that position, though. So I give it to Perez. It's fairly obvious what Hans wants to do. He's comfortable on the ground. And I'm sure he wants to take back or, or take the top position. But what do you tell Perez? Hey, you know, I mean, it looked like he was pretty savvy on the ground, to too. But I think of the Marvin two, he's the more comfortable on the feet. I mean, it's hard to say because both bo times we're on the feet, shot him right away. You know, I would like to see him on the feet a little bit more. We obviously know he can take him down, so keep him on the feet, see how it's touch your luck, and it's, you know, if all those fellas take him down. Want to give some love to our sponsors, Glenn Lerner Injury Attorneys. One call, that's all. All right, here we go. Second round, Nick Perez versus Dane Hans. We believe Perez is up 10-9. Hans really needing this round. Wow, he eats uh, two that, punches there. He got Copper coming in with just that kick. He sure did, man. His head was rocked back and forth by Perez. The strikes, he gets hit again. Now Perez goes in for the double leg, gets him down. Of course, Hans is comfortable on his back. However, you can only be there too long. Let's see what Perez can do here. He looks like he's just going to eat, eat a little bit of the clock right now, gather himself. I don't know if he's tired or if he's just trying to control the position he's better. He's trying to push him up against the cage there. You know, it's funny. Ulysses, maybe you can explain something. We often hear people say, hey, he should push him up against the cage. But at mm -hmm. the same time, the guy on the bottom, we're, we're told, he should 
bring his own back to the cage to help him get up. So what's the sequence yeah, there? The, why? There's a misconception. You don't want to put the person's back on the fence. You want to put his head on the fence. You put his head on the fence, you can't, you can't move his hips and, and uh, pivot out. You put his back on the fence, they can wall walk. And the All thing right. is, so you want to bring him to the fence, but only to the point where his head correct. is touching it and the rest of his body's laying flat. Yeah, you want to put him against the fence with as little, with as, as little amount of his body touching the fence as possible. Very crafty by Hans to get up there. Ghost? Oh, nice catch. Well, I was going to say, one of the most dominant things you can do once you get him in that position is throw the elbows. But here in the amateur MMA, we can't throw those elbows. Right. Correct. And so now we have Hans, uh, Dean Hans on top. Looks like uh, Prez just wanted to hold oh. on. And, uh, looks like he's wanted to hold on and wait nice for the restart. Slam. And did you guys catch that slam last night by Gerald Harris? The Man. Legacy? Oh. The, guy the last Legacy Fighting Championships, of course, they become Legacy uh, fighting, fighting Alliance. Fighting alliance. Yep. Oh, they, they, oh, oh, nice they join with Resurrection. Oh, oh, nice. There's an armbar attempt, and it's not a, just an attempt. It's a submission win for Nick Perez. He's fired up, and we weren't expecting that, right? If we figured if the submission was going to come, it was going to come from Hans. Yeah, great fight. You know, we, we, we said it. Perez seemed comfortable both both spots. But we thought the the striking games where he wanted to keep it, but he he uh, he definitely proved us wrong. Yeah, Perez had both uh, both hands. Looked like he, he wanted to force the restart, then uh, hands just got kind of uh, slipped up, postured up, and uh, Perez threw his legs over and got that armbar. All right. Well, Nick Perez is going to go to one. Sorry, two and two. Dane Hans is going to go to one and four. There, the fighters are embracing. It's sportsmanship. It was a really, really high-level amateur fight. Here we Here go, guys. We go. Here's yep. the setup. Walk us through it, Ulysses. Yeah, so he's controlling He's controlling the wrist, and uh, looks like uh, hands got a little bit too high on Prez's back, and Prez just swung his, his hips over and took the arm. Yeah, really slick stuff. I mean, it was kind of automatic. It, once he got him down, he was pretty much tapping within about half a second. Yeah, I mean, once your head gets over your opponent's hips, you, you leave your arm uh, uh, vulnerable for that position. He just took the arm and swung his hips over. All right, well... Let's put it in the books. We'll send it up to our good friend, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 42 seconds into the second round, Dr. John Quinn calls us out to the fight for your winner by tap out due to arm bar, Nick Perez. Again, again, congratulations to Nick Perez out of Team U Shock. He's going to go to two and two. He's a 500 fighter now. Dane Hans, one and four out of Torres MMA. We're almost at the halfway point. We have some featherweights coming up next. Gutierrez Imbert versus Clay Matza.